Always felt like overcompensation to me to start being like, it's not even just the woman getting saved by the man. Now it's just falling in love. That's that's regressive. <laughs> like, wait, what? What's happening? It's like the story has to be about more than just love. Love, ugh. love's so lame, Mahler. Now it's about becoming the CEO of Apple. Okay, I it's wonder like power. that. That's almost like what it is. It's like, oh, why have why like have petty attachments to other human beings when you can just be earning more money in a in a cubicle <laughs> office somewhere for a corporation, <laughs> and then that's you can spend it means. on things to try and fill that aching, horrifying void in your life. And try and silence those voices reminding you that eventually you're going to die alone and unloved, surrounded by cats that Gosh. will slowly eat your corpse. And that that happens so fast. That's like 31, Drinker. That's fast. Zegler's nine years away from being like, oh, damn, I should have not said that. Well, shit. we've all got a shelf life. And ultimately, like, you know, we all get more progressively horrifying as we get older to look at. <laughs> and so, yay. So, most of us didn't start out that great to begin with. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so. <laughs> um, it, it's only going to get worse as you get older. That's why you you should try and like settle down relatively early when you can still get something halfway decent. But oh yeah, it's it's not a good it's not a good thing to because generally movies used to preach the idea of um, uh, material goods or wealth or success or power was less important than finding like real meaning in your life. Yeah. That meaning was through personal connections to other people, i.e. falling in love and, and starting a family or whatever. Uh, and that applies to men and women. Now it's like, yeah, it's preaching the exact opposite. Just go out there, be a girl boss and, and rule things and, mm. and be in charge of stuff and be strong all the time. You don't need people. You don't yeah. need attachments yeah, to you things. Can, you can make the argument, and I think in some instances it's a fair argument, that in certain older, say, 80s-style macho action films, women were not much better than mere sex objects, and that that yes, was a bad thing. That. I think that's a fair argument to make. I don't think the conclusion... Was it a bad that, though, thing, is though, Platoon? Like, well, <laughs> that's a question for... Yeah. Um, but I don't think that the answer to that is not then to say, well, you know what? We want the same kind of like lack of attachment, just the other way around. We still don't want love. We still don't want fully realized and recognized relationships. We still want individuality and progress is basically material wealth and that's it. Um, but this time it's the woman doing the acquiring as opposed to the man. I think the same things that made some of those older 80s action films very shallow and not particularly engaging unless all you're in it for is tits is the same thing that makes a lot of these modern female remakes not particularly engaging or meaningful or deep either. They're both missing a very, very important element, which is the love part that she seems to regret so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the, the difference being, though, that those 80s action films that you referenced, they never marketed themselves as something to be taken seriously. They were mm -hmm. always tongue in cheek. They're not like an actual, um, you know, coda on how to live your life. Whereas, like, something like this uh, is almost like pushing itself as, like, well, this is what young people should aspire to. This is the yeah. kind of message that we want to put across to the younger generation. That's very different from like a dumb action movie. Yeah, yeah you didn't you didn't yeah, see Sylvester Stallone, though? right? You didn't see Sylvester Stallone coming out and being like, hey yo, this uh movie about rising <laughs> above and shoot Nazis and stuff. Like he it wasn't about that. Right? It was <laughs> no it was, but it, it was about uh, like a man in his sort of peak of performance going out defending people, sacrificing himself and then getting the girl. Like, yeah. that's a very base kind of um, male attitude and sort of fantasy, like power fantasy. So, but when it comes to, like, what women are getting now, it is essentially uh, go through, like, what is a princess except a job at the end of the day? If you're not going to marry a king, then you're just working. And so it's go through, be a princess, get money, don't have kids, don't have a relationship. This is very different. Like, I, th I think that the basic action fantasy, like, is a masculine value. And I wouldn't say this was a really a feminine one, though. Like, just to be well, atomized and seek money. I mean, speaking as someone with a penis, I prefer not to try and tell the people what, like, feminine values are. But I mean, I, I think I see where you're coming from. I just I don't really think that the it's the male versus female fantasy argument is necessarily the best one, though, because I, I fully believe that Rachel Zegler's fantasy is what she's describing there. I think there oh, yeah, is a large subsection of, of largely upper middle class affluent women and celebrity women in particular who do fantasize about power and about leadership and who don't really think that they have any time for love, relationships, children and all that kind of thing. It's their fantasy just as much as the old 80s action thing was a yeah. male fantasy. We can argue about whether it's a productive fantasy, but I don't think just saying it's not fantasy or that it's not quite it the is, same. As, is it a fantasy um, or is it their life? For instance, they've got to go through Hollywood to climb the slippery pole, which means they can't have kids because if they do, then they'll be at a disadvantage for the men who don't have to have kids. And therefore well, they it? go through and they just put it into their stories what they live. 
is it a justification almost? It's a validation, you know, because this is this is the life that I live now. It's all about my career. It's all about my uh, the pursuit of power and um, and success and stuff. Uh, so I can't really make time to start a family, to have meaningful relationships with other people. It's all just superficial. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's all about just the work. And, yeah. you know, is it just a way of saying, well, this is how I live. And so I want other people to to live the same way because misery loves company. Yeah, it's it's the it's the self insert. And one thing that's probably the, pretty important to note is she's probably very, you know, somebody that's, you know, her, like at her size or what she does for a living, how well known she is. Her DMs on every social media is filled to the brim with people saying that they're in love with her. She has no short of uh, like that affirmation that people adore her. That's why. I, well, I don't need to focus on that. I have all. I have everybody adores me. You know, everybody adores me around me. Everybody adores me professionally. Everybody adores me on social media. Therefore, I don't actually require that, so I can focus on this, which is what happens to actually a lot of people um, around that spectrum. I feel like. 